I don't know why you play your game so late when you're here all day. Because I film videos during the day, Allie. Come on. He knows. What I know is the average adult needs seven to nine hours of sleep a night to stay healthy. Well, the average adult also doesn't run one of the biggest video game channels on the internet. What up, Scott Is This your boy, Great Scott. We about to get all up in this video. Oh, Scott, you know what? You're an idiot. Um, so I was thinking... You suck. After I get home tonight... Shut up! Get out of here! We need to talk. Damn, you're toast! I've been telling her to kick your ass to the curb for years! There's nothing worse in the world than when someone says to you, we need to talk. You're worrying about absolutely nothing, all right? You never thought that she might be pregnant? That is not possible. I knew you guys like little boys. No, because she's on the pill! Yeah, penis pills. God, I wish my lady mates played video games. This morning, before she left, she said, we need to talk, and I wasn't paying attention. Look, I'm just trying to find her so that we can talk. Yeah, that's trouble. Good luck. Hello? She might not even be at work. She might be out in these streets. You know what? She's not out in these streets, so you can stop that right there. I think she's gonna tell you, you have a little... You bathed. So what are the common signs? She's got a new sugar daddy. She's smooching another pickle. She's got erectile dysfunction? That doesn't make sense. This one do you even care about comments? Have you met me? How to talk to your girlfriend. Call Allie up, find out what she wants to talk about. No, I'm not gonna do that. That's a stupid idea. I know you think that this whole world revolves around you and that YouTube. If I don't have my brand, I have nothing. But you gotta understand, Allie doesn't have that. Great Scott. Great Scott? All she has is... You. God, she's totally gonna unsubscribe from me. Really doubling down on that social media metaphor. This is a good lesson for life. Oftentimes, when there's a problem, the best thing to do is just ignore it and hope it goes away. Under what circumstances does that ever make sense? Global warming. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we have the distinct pleasure of speaking with. Trey Cheney, you guys will know him from all his old projects, Gordon Hawk and We Own the City, and of course, my Wire fans, Poot! <laughs> hey, what is up to everybody out there? Man, I'm so honored to be on with you, man. Film Snob Reviews, this is amazing. Um, I'm just happy, man, to, to just still be in this business 25 plus years later doing what I love to do. Listen, and, and you do it well, man. You've been doing it 25 years, but every time you do something you always do something different yeah yeah that's true you know i mean just my fans and my supporters them you know meeting me for the first time 20 years ago on the wire you know that that was in 2002 playing this character poot and now 20 years later i'm playing police officer gordon hawk on hbo hbo max we own the city as a police officer so this is you know this is this is like a full circle moment for me. And of course, you know, with We Own This City, this is a totally different character. You know, I'm a, I'm a video gamer. <laughs> so it's like, you know, this is crazy, man. I'm, I'm just so, so happy with We Need to Talk. What's funny about that is it, it, your, your character arc that you just discussed re truly does ring, ring true what Aaron Eckhart says in The Dark Knight. You live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Yeah. And, and, and that's true, but let's get to the, the, the task at hand here. Let's talk, we need to talk about we need to talk. And in the, in the film, you play Tango Unchained, which I spoke, to, uh, I spoke to the director last week. I spoke to Todd last week, and he said that Tango was based on a friend of his. Yeah. He knows in real life. Did you know that story going in? Yeah, yeah. Todd had, you know, pretty much explained the whole story to me about his buddy. And... You know, this this character for me is so funny, man, because Tango Unchained, this guy lives at home with his mom. He's constantly on a video game, bothering everybody, talking trash, talking junk. And it's it's an amazing, fun character for me because before I even, you know, got into the whole idea of playing this character, I had read the script and I fell in love with the script. And then Todd had told me James Maslow was, was playing Scott you know, the great gamer or whatever. And I was like, yo, James Maslow, I mean, come on, you know, big time rush Nickelodeon. Why wouldn't I want to do a project with that brother, right? So um, when I read the script, it was involving playing video games and I wasn't familiar with video games. I My son, he plays every video game. So I had to get used to Call of Duty, 
Mortal Kombat. I had to get used to all the games, right? So um, that was definitely an experience for me, but it was a wonderful experience because anytime I'm on set of a project that I truly love, right, which I love all of them, I, it's a learning experience. So just being in that world and the way Todd Wolf wrote this piece and directed it, it was it was amazing, man. I, I had so much fun and I just can't wait for everybody around the world to see we need to talk. It For me, it's about balance because you have this famous YouTube gamer, but at the same time, you know, it, the movie is showing you could get really tied up into that video game. You could spend hours and hours every day until you start to neglect your real life, which is your family, which is your friends. So it's a, it's a heartfelt, funny comedy drama, you know. So I was really, I was really just intrigued by by the whole script and every single cast member from Emily to Jonathan to Christel, you know, to to James Mass. Everybody is just amazing in this film. I would agree. I actually really liked the movie a lot. I saw it before my interview with Todd last week. And man, you're right. Everybody just sort of coalesced together very nicely. You all yeah. seem like you had a great time making this movie. And that is something that you can see inside the film when you watch it. There's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a fun being had on that set. And you don't see that all the time when you watch something. But especially not projects like this that are smaller, more intimate. Sometimes yeah. if there's any sort of, you know, trepidation between people, it, it exacerbates itself right on that screen because everything's larger in the movies, right? Yeah, man. And, and, and that's the crazy thing. Like you just, you just nailed it right on the nose. It, it's, it was a very intimate, like shooting schedule. And I say that because I may not have been on set when Emily was on set or when Jonathan was on set, but I was able to see James, you know, on set. And you know, we, we were all brought in at different times. And, you know, Todd Wolf is like my family. You know, we met each other years ago, probably I want to say over 10, 15 years ago when we shot the film Streets that, that starred Meek Mill. And uh, me and him always kept in touch. You know, I've always kept in touch with him. And, and, I, and I've always knew he was a brilliant writer and director and producer. And I knew I was going to end up working with him again. You know, so f for me to come back and for even we need to talk to be a full circle moment, me coming back, me and Todd are back together working, you know, it, this is, it just felt good, you know, and like you said, man, Todd in, in the whole professionalism that th this brother is always, you know, how he's always been, it, it, it just, it felt like home, you know, shooting. And I was just like, I was blown away, you know, and I had so much fun. I mean, these, these guys, they, they really took care of us on set. And, and, and I love coming to work when everybody knows what they're doing. You know, <laughs> from the camera guys, the lighting, the sound, you know, the, everybody had their lines down packed. I mean, cause you want, that, that, those, are the type of, those are the type of projects you want to work on. Nobody's wasting nobody's time because we all know time is money, you yeah. know? That's right. And we're all about our money. That's exactly how it should be. Now, <laughs> yeah. it's funny because you said you're not much of a gamer. I talked to Todd last week. He's a huge gamer. Yeah. Can you talk about having to learn how to play Splitgate? Because I heard that you guys had to learn this game and play this game. Yeah. Have fun playing it. Yeah. It, I mean, put it this way. I had the best teacher. I had Todd. <laughs> so Todd, you know, just showing me certain things and you know how to how to work the joystick or whatever and you know i had my headphones on and you know it 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 became fun and i was like wow i never even like thought of myself you know really putting in the time and the effort to play video games but it was one of those things where i was like man i better not get used to this because if i get used to this i'm gonna be <laughs> i'm gonna be on that game 24/7 yeah. so it it just it it made me understand that world you know and and i just had so much fun doing it and i'm hearing that we're probably going to be doing some traveling soon promoting a movie playing video games in other cities and <laughs> you know it's, it's going to be crazy man 
That sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, here in my city where I'm at, they actually have uh, one of the largest arcades because we host the largest video game tournament in the world here where I live. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Several thousand people all send in here. Only one thing of deodorant between them. Uh, <laughs> man, I hate gamers, man. I love them. Uh, so we talked about the fact that you you love the projects that you do, but I wanted to ask you, Trey, because this is really interesting when I looked at your filmography, you've, you've had such a diverse filmography. Who are some artists, that, whether that be creatives, actors, directors, writers, that you look to as inspiring or that inspire you to just keep doing what you're doing, man? Man, I really, um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Denzel Washington, Samuel Jackson, Will Smith. I'm a huge fan of just, you know, those type of guys that I look up to and say, man, you know what? They've been in this business for a very, very long time. And I can only imagine, you know, what we see is all of the wins, but just them still having the longevity and them staying consistent and, and really, you know, putting out great material, it motivates me. You know, it motivates me as an actor, as an artist, because I'm also a hip hop artist. And I'm like, you know what? I can balance and juggle the two, you know? So I'm, I'm really, really inspired by, the fact that with them never giving up, I don't have to ever give up. And all I got to do is stay consistent, persistent, and motivated to keep on going. As hard as this business is, because sometimes as an actor, you find yourself auditioning more than you're actually booking jobs. But that's the time when you got to develop that tough skin. You got to work on yourself. You got to study, you know, constantly. Like, this is... I tell people all the time, they say, man, I want to be an actor. And I'm like, this is 24 seven. You know, this is not just, I wake up one day and say, oh, I feel like it. Oh, another day, I don't feel like it. No, this is, this is what I made a lifelong commitment to. And I'm, I'm sticking to it. It's, no, it's not up for negotiations. I'm sticking to it. And, and, and I'm gonna remain, you know, committed to that process. I love, I love that answer. I mean, all three of those gentlemen have one big thing in common. And it is not that they are black creators; it's that they are award-nominated black creators. Yeah. And, and, and I wanted to ask you that as a fellow black creator, because that's what we're going to call you. You're not just an actor, as you mentioned; you're a hip hop artist as well. Do you find in the world of acting, it's difficult to get great parts solely for black creatives, or do you find that oftentimes the the roles are less ambiguous and you you just fit the part well? Well, it, I want to say, you know, back in the day, it probably was hard. But now with technology and, you know, social media, I'm looking at people from all colors, all races, and, you know, even Black creators that can put something up on Instagram or put something up on YouTube, like a trailer of them, them and their friends collectively getting together and post it and get a deal. And it's like, you know, now it's, it's becoming easier, you know, to, to, to be a creative because we got social media. Now, as far as some of the parts that I've done, of course, The Wire was such a huge platform of me playing this drug dealer poop. And so it was a time when I, wore, I was getting typecast. But when you have a brother like Ta Wolf that says, hey, I want to give you this role. You're, you're a YouTube yeah. gamer. Yeah. You're going to learn this. And then when you have HBO, HBO Max, we own this city saying, hey, you're a police officer. You're going to play Gordon Hall. Now it's it's the diversity. You know, people are able to see the range with me being an actor. And I'm so I, I feel the time it couldn't be perfect. You know, we we own this city just came out April 25th. And then you got we need to talk coming out May 13th. Yep, so it's like the time for me couldn't be perfect. Yeah, I, th I thought about that, too, because I was uh, I was on HBO Max yesterday, uh, you know, watching some stuff. And I was like, man, I'm interviewing Trey tomorrow. Let me just, uh, you know, turn this on. So I yeah. did check out the first little bit of that. And I was like, OK, all right. Yeah, we got something to talk yeah. about tomorrow then, because this is good. This is really good. I mean, I obviously, it wasn't going to turn out badly, given who's in in this project. <laughs> yeah, right. There wasn't there wasn't any way that this was going to turn out. How I put this? badly right <laughs> yeah i feel you i feel you i mean you got you got so much talent in in this in this project there was no way with 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 names like josh charles that it was going to turn out 
uh, bad, right? I mean, those guys. Yeah, John Ber- John Berthold, Jamie Hector. I mean, and then it was almost like a wire reunion. You know, you got all of us from the wire in it. This playing cops now. You yeah. know, so I, I just, I feel good. I feel blessed, man, to just still, like I said in the beginning, you know, being in this business 25 plus years, still staying consistent, still, still putting out music, still just, just, just loving the art, you know, just loving the art, even being on here with you, you know, being able to talk about, you know, w- what we got going on, because I mean, it's a lot of people that don't get this far, you know, and I'm, I'm very fortunate, man. I'm very fortunate. And I'm very grateful and thankful to, to be in the position I'm in. Trust me when I tell you that the healing is definitely mutual. There's no way that I should be here right now. But I yeah, work I feel you. to get here. And yeah. I, I can tell you right now. So when people say that to me, I'm like, you don't understand what we've had to go through to get to this point. Uh, That's as true. Self-made, you know, self-created entity. You know, Entrepreneurs. No backing, yeah. no backing, just, a, you know. 200, 300 words in a dream. That's 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 what we look for. Let me ask you a question. As a hip hop artist, who would you say were are is comparable to your 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 style? Because when it comes to hip hop and and rap, there's a lot of different flows and a lot of different ways that those things mm-hmm. can go. And I'm not a huge connoisseur, but I prefer you know the more I, I guess you would say old school style. I like most deaf. I like black stars. Who would you compare yours to? Well, that's what um. That, that has always been my lane, just authentic hip hop. Now, com- as far as an artist, when you think about authentic hip hop, you think about Black Star, you think about Most Def, you think about Black Thought, you know, you, you think about these guys. And that, that for me, that's the hip hop lane that I'm in. You know, I love J. Cole. I love Kendrick Lamar. I love Drake. I love people that can really, really rap you know, in, in this true artist. And uh, it's so it's so funny you mention that because I open all the time for Big Daddy Kane. That's like my OG. I, you know, he brings me on tour on some of his spot date tours with him, uh, Rock Him, Slick Rick. These are the guys that I open nice. for, yeah. you know, and and then even Snoop Dogg down to this day. You know, Snoop is my homeboy who I've opened for at least twice. And on big stages, big arenas. And it's like, man, that's because they see something in me, this, this, what we're talking about, the authentic authenticity of hip hop. Like, I wanna say something in my raps. You know, I want people to be like, wow, he he just said that. I wanted to have a nice beat where people could dance to, or if it's something that's thought provoking, people can think about what I just said. I mean, because that's what, that's the genre of hip hop I come from. Yeah. you know that. And it's not, and I don't knock anybody that's doing whatever type of music that they're doing. Like right now, I, I love Tyler the Creator. I love, I love his style. I love how he raps. I love his whole his image, you right. know. And, and he had would, and the I, same hometown, so I, I love Tyler. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody that I would definitely like if I could if I could meet him or just shit, get in the studio with him and build. I, I would love to do that because he's a he's a dynamite artist. Yeah, I'm not a, so I'm, I'm, not just, a I'm not a Los Angelino anymore, but I hear that he re, that he hangs out at the uh, rallies on El Segundo if you're ever in L- L.A. again. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're down there. He's there. You'll find him. That's what's up. <laughs> I, I I love that answer, Trey. I do, man. It, it just speaks to how important for you that your projects are. So we talked about all your great projects. We talked about this fantastic project, but I'm going to ask you the hardest question that I ask every single guest. <laughs> yeah that I get in front of me. You can only watch two movies for the rest of your life, Trey. What are you picking? Uh, man, this is hard. Um, two films? Two. Wow. I got to say one. <laughs> and this might sound crazy. I got to say New Jack City. Oh, yeah. I love New Jack City. And then to... to to give a more fun, hip, I gotta say, house party one. <laughs> Kid and play. All right, good choice. Kid and play. Yeah, I got. I mean, yeah, I, I give you the 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 you know the drug, the the whole Nino Brown crazy, but then house party was was so feel good. It, it just that movie. You know, we wanted to be kid and play. 
You know, we wanted to dance like that. We wanted to, we wanted our father to, to, to be like that. Like, it, you know. I think it's interesting. You, t- you chose two early 90s films. I, I think that speaks to what, you know, the, yeah. the period in your life when those things really were hitting you a little bit harder, right? I mean. It, yeah, because, I mean, and not to cut you off, you know, I, I grew up, I grew up in that, that kind of like that era, like eight years old. I was backstage at the Apollo after I had won first place, $2,000, probably at the end of the night had 5,000 because all of the, the drug dealers in New York City was in the top booth throwing money down on the ground after I had performed. So I'm backstage, Big Daddy Kane is back there. That's the first time I had met Big Daddy Kane at eight years old. I got pictures of me and Kane when I was eight. I got pictures of me and Mike Tyson when I was nine years old backstage at the Apollo. So I grew up in, in, in almost like that, that 80s, mid 80s, late 90s type of vibe, you know, late 80s. And these guys, these, if it wasn't for Big Daddy Kane, I wouldn't became a hip hop, hip hop artist. You know, so I, yeah, those, those are the, that's the type of era. That's the type of feel good that I'm, that I'm on. I love that. I love that. And, and you know, what's funny, you picked two good movies too. New Jack City is a great film. And for what it is, House Party is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's funny. It's just, it makes me laugh. And I I love that answer because I, what I love about asking that question is that I get to hear stories as to why these movies are important. And I get to, wow. Yeah. Because quite frankly, I never know what the hell you guys are going to ask you that question. You know, it's always a, a crapshoot whether I'm going to get something interesting or whether I'm going to get the same old, same old when I, when I talk to these people. And that's why I love that question. <laughs> let, let yeah. me ask you, if, if, if somebody told you that they were interested in the movie, but weren't sold on it, what would you say to them to say, to sell them on? We need to talk. Well, we need to talk. It's, it's, it's a real life story uh, involving, again, I go back to that word balance. We all need balance in our lives because we all, whether we know it or not, we all have certain type of careers. That career might be your job, okay? I I go to work every day. I go to a nine to five. Or you might be an artist. That's your career. Any type of artist, blogger, you know, interviewer, anything you do, you know? But the balance between that and real life and I always say real life because the real family issues that we all have in our families that we all go through, we, we have to learn how to balance to give each, each piece the time that it deserves, you know, and, and that's how I would sell that, you know, I would sell that like, man, let's just, let's look at this film, let's be inspired by from beginning to end, because it's always a beginning and an end. You know, how it begins might not necessarily be how it finishes, it's, but it's going to it's going to enlighten you. It's going to uplift you and really make you say, you know what? This was a heartfelt film. Todd, Todd Wolf put his heart in it. I know he did. I think you sold men. I already seen the movie. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. pretty good. Guys, I would say that you need to check out. We need to talk because it is without a doubt, very funny. And it was quite a surprise for me because oftentimes I will get these smaller projects and I will be left unimpressed and I will be left just, eh, that was good. This one actually caught my interest, kept my interest and had me laughing. I usually do not laugh at these smaller comedies because the comedy isn't there, but the script and the entire thing is so funny that you guys should definitely check this one out when you get a chance. I just really want to thank Trey. Thank you so much for spending even a, a, a minute of your time with us. We appreciate having you here. I look forward to whatever you're doing next. It's going to be a yeah. fun time. You got anything else to say to the audience as Tango? Man, we need to talk. It's coming, y'all. The virtual tickets, May 12th. The Philly, Philadelphia premiere is May 13th, along with the movie coming out on a national big scale level. So we need to talk movie.com is the website. Get your tickets. I can't wait for everybody to see me play Tango Unchained. Y'all are gonna laugh, it's hilarious. My whole entire cast is amazing. And I love you all. Follow me on Instagram. It's Trey Chaney Vision. 
T-R-A-Y-C-H-A-N-E-Y-V-I-S-I-O-N. And then on Twitter, I'm at Trey Chain, T-R-A-Y-C-H-A-N-E-Y. And uh, yeah, man, I'm here. You know, I'm here and I'm ready to make it happen. You stole my next question. I was going to ask you where they could find you if they wanted to chat with you about this further. You stole my next question. Well done. They, they got it. it. Guys, just make sure you check out the movie when it opens on Friday. And if you're in Philadelphia, get your tickets. Go see it. It's great. It was shot in Philadelphia, from what I understand, from Todd Wolf as well. So go check it out. Get, get, get your tickets in. And Trey, thank you so much, bro. We appreciate you, man. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.